10 years ago, fashion was a club. It was a very small, mm -hmm. limited group of people that did what they did, were creative. Were, but the rest of the world wasn't really paying attention. And all of a sudden, the eyes are on our, our you know, whether it's you know magazines or designers. Mm -hmm. you know, there's show upon show upon show. Mm -hmm. It's just not what we are about. I moved here when I was 13. I came here to study. Grew up in Rome, which is a very sort of amazing, cosmopolitan, historical, magical place. You go and you take a walk, a passeggiata, and it was this very thing of like social interaction. And clothing was a huge part mm -hmm. of it. It was a very kind of chic neighborhood, but it mm -hmm. was definitely, there was a lot of right wing friction in it. And I remember there was this one bar um, called the Clida, which people would hang out in. And I, they were kind of a little older than me, so I would kind of look onto them and I would always be like, one day I'm going to be part of that crowd mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and I remember that one really sad day, they put a bomb inside the Euclida and it oh blew God. up. and killed people. At the time it was really incredibly political. I was 12, 13, 14 and I would talk about politics. I was offered a job at Bergdorf Goodman to start up first Prada shop. And I remember this was this huge war between my family and I. My family was like, you have to go, you have to sell, this is what we do, this is what we do. And I am like, no, I want to be a photographer, I want to do this, I want to do editorial, I want to do magazines. And like, what are you talking about? This is stuff that doesn't exist. You're imagining this whole industry. It was this big time. battle and then finally I, I won. I knew that all I wanted to be was an editor from a magazine. And I think my sense of style is also very uh, tomboyish. I have a lot of masculine elements. I think that comes from growing up with my dad and the way he would dress. He had all these amazing military pieces. He would throw them on sometimes. You know, it was amazing to see him, you know, with a pair of, you know, very sort of well-tailored pair of gray trousers and then he would put on a military shirt on top and it's like at the time, you know, we're talking about the 60s or the 70s in Italy and it was just kind of unheard of. Wearing my favorite all-time dress and I saw it on the runway and you know, those moments of like mm. pure lust and love and I was like, oh, that is the most beautiful thing and and it's for me very, it's very much, fashion is very much like that. There's a call, there's a call of the wild somehow when I see something that was really incredibly special. I collect these kind of old, very old-fashioned 1950s diamante little necklaces. It's great to mix them up with things that are really like, you know, like... The neon. opposite. Yeah, the opposite. That I'm wearing a Jill Stewart dress. I'm a huge fan of Jill. She's a neighbor and a friend. They're very prim and proper, her clothes, and I'm not very prim and proper, so <laughs> I, I'll put it together in my own kind of unusual way. And wherever I go, I buy great socks. Mismatched socks, funny socks. I never tie my shoes. My first job was Marina Schiano, who's mm. an amazing, mm -hmm. wonderful um, boss. She it was she was Italian, and so I... she. I think she hired me solely because I spoke her language. And from there I moved to Glamour. From Glamour I went to Vogue. I was at Vogue for five years. From Vogue I went to Marie Claire. And then I met my husband <laughs> and I moved to Italy and I had my and my da my daughter Anita. We launched Team Vogue in uh, 2002. And to me what is just amazing is to kind of reinterpret these trends, you know, looking at a an amazing collection down the runway in Paris and then reinventing it for young people. So adding denim to it or putting, you know, tiny little shrunken t-shirts with it, but at the same time having the essence of that beautiful collection. You try to be a good parent when you're being an editor. And unfortunately, a lot of these other public domains like social media, they're not good parents. I sometimes feel that I'm becoming, you know, very old fashioned, but I am, you know, it's like you are there to really teach these kids. You create your own persona when you're in fashion. You know, you are an actor, you are an actress and you kind of, I mean, I don't say that about myself because I, I'm not really like that, but a lot of the people that I, that I work with, I realize that, you know, you kind of, they create this amazing persona and sometimes when that happens, you lose sight of really what you really care about. When I'm at shows and, you know, when there is the craziness, I wear black. I never wear black. I hate wearing black. But I it, I know that if I wear black, I won't be bothered. They run after you like you're paparazzi, like you're a celebrity, but you know what? I'm not. Getting old in Italy is actually an honor, truthfully. Being a mother and growing old and having lines on your face and is, is, is beautiful is beauty. I mean, it really is, and it's so different from American culture. I do use trends to kind of work in my wardrobe, but it's always about my own personal style very much reflects in everything that I put together. You know, it's so much a personal statement. I wake up in the morning, I'm 
you know, I feel upset or something mm -hmm. is wrong and you can see it in the way I dress. Mm -hmm. Or I feel happy and energetic and everything is wonderful and mm -hmm. I'm dressed like mm -hmm. the sun. It's very much a canvas of how, of how I feel every day.